iClone is an ideal tool for creating great scenes to add to your video projects. For instance, perhaps you want to create an interesting video title splash, an intro, or an establishing shot. It's very difficult to create such visual aesthetics, especially with using 3D, but that is not the case when you use iClone. Let's first take a look at how we can create an amazing intro for our video, such as create a very awesome fly by Earth until we arrive to our destination. So let's first get started by creating a 3D sphere. It's actually very easy to do. First find the tab at the top of the program called Set. After clicking on Set, make sure you have the prop selected, and then on the left side of the program, you will find several different prop types. Select 3D Blocks. You should see several different types of 3D blocks, but for this demonstration, let's just select Ball 001. Let's click and drag the ball right into our scene. You can place the ball anywhere you choose, or if you just double click on the ball, a 3D ball will appear at the origin. Now let's add some cool textures to this ball to make it appear like a planet. First, let's click on the ball. On the right side of the program, you'll find the Modify tab. This is where you can find all the controls and parameters you can edit to customize your props, and in our case, customize the 3D ball. Let's scroll down until we find the Material and Texture settings. Here we can edit the six texture channels. Diffuse is the actual color of the object. Think of it like paint on the surface of a wall. Opacity is how transparent an object is. Glass has low opacity, and the brick wall, of course, has high opacity. Bump is how rough the surface is. If you add a texture channel for bump, it will make the surface appear not smooth. Specular is how the object and light will interact with each other. Higher the specular, the more shiny it will appear, like a shiny red apple. Glow means that the object will appear to be giving off light. Reflection is a texture that makes the object appear to reflect back other objects. Think of it like stainless steel plate. So to make our planets, I will use only the diffuse and bump map. To add the diffuse map, double click on the icon. You can choose any textures, but I already pre-downloaded new textures. You can do the same and use the browse option above to locate your textures on your computer. After I loaded the diffuse, let's do the same for the bump texture channel. Now the bump is different from the diffuse because it is only white and black. Black colors means that it will appear pressed inward, and white will appear that it has been pushed outward. Now take a look at my planet. It looks pretty good, but it could be better. In fact, I think I need to add in some stars. The easiest way to do this is to change the 2D background. So let's go to the top of the program and select Stage. Make sure 2D background is selected, and then let's click on the image icon for 2D background on the Modify tab. Just like with the fuse, you can use any image. Ah, oh, now that's better. Looks really cool, right? But we need to make some film for our Magix project, so let me show you how to add in cameras and then give it animation. Make sure you are still in the Stage tab and find the Select Camera. On the Modify tab, let's click Add Camera. Notice at the top of our display, it now reads Camera 1. To add animation, it's actually really simple. At the bottom, notice that there is a time scrubber. Let's scrub to about 5 seconds. Now at the top, let's click on the zoom button and zoom in closer to our planet. But we want to look like we fly past the planet, not into it, so let's click on the pan tool and pan the camera up to the left side. Now let's press play and watch. All we need now is some cool rocket engine sound effects. So how do we export this to our Magix Movie Edit Pro? Simply click on the Export tab at the top, select Video, then on the Modify tab, let's go through the parameters. For format, AVI is perhaps the best format to use when editing the clip later in Magix, so let's not change that. Output size, there are several standard formats, but you can customize the output size to fit your project needs. Render quality, Make sure that the final render is selected and that anti-alias is on to improve the images of your 3D video clip. Next is the output range. Since we set our clip at about 5 seconds in length, we should only export those 5 seconds. To make sure we have the correct length of video, look back at our time scrubber. At each end of the scrubber are small blue triangles. They signify the beginning and the end of our clip. So let's scrub the blue triangle to the point where the clip ends. Notice how your output range automatically updated itself in real time, so we will only render and export approximately 300 frames. Frame rate is best set at 15 or above, but since I don't want a large export file, I will leave it at 15. Click export, then name your project, and then decide if you want to use any compressions. 
For this example, I'll use full frames and not use any compression. Now once we're inside of Magix, we can import our 3D video clip into our pool. Then, just like with any other video clips, we can use Magix to fine tune and edit. Let's add in some titles. Alright, that was the basic way to use Icon 3 to help you improve your Magix video projects. Use your imagination and creativity to really amaze your friends and family with 3D effects in your next Magix project. For more information about how to create and import really cool models into your iClone scene, make sure you check out our Google SketchUp and 3D Exchange pipeline found on our website here. There you will find more tutorials about creating realism, material effects, and creating breathtaking scenes with iClone 3.